Hello, and welcome to the Marquette Food Co-op's Teaching Kitchen, virtually. My name is Sarah Monte, and I'm the Outreach Director here at the Co-op, and today I'm going to teach you how to make simple garlic black bean tacos. So every taco should have something crunchy and green involved in it. So we're gonna start by talking about a slaw that uses cabbage in it. Um, you can put whatever you want on your tacos. If you prefer lettuce, that's fine, but I swear this slaw is so great because it actually can be made in a huge batch and then eaten over a period of days. So let's first talk about cutting a cabbage because I've seen some crazy stuff happen with cutting a cabbage. And so we have our whole cabbage here and it's a round object. Round objects are always scary to cut, but we're gonna do this. So first, let's take off the bottom. And now we have something flat to work with. We'll put this aside. And now the easiest way to do this is to quarter it. I, of course, have already washed the cabbage before shooting, but I'm gonna take off these outer leaves anyway. Sometimes the outer leaves of the cabbage, they're just not as nice. They have kind of a funny texture. Maybe they have some staining, or if it's been nicked, you might see a little bit of black. That's okay, that's just oxidation. But we're gonna take that off, and we're gonna start with the nice fresh green leaves. So let's quarter this cabbage. Now this can feel scary, but remember, you've made it a flat object, so it's actually pretty easy. Just take your time. So now we have a nice flat surface to work on. We're gonna put it down onto that surface, and we're gonna quarter it. So I'm quartering my cabbage, and now you can see this is the core of the cabbage. Now, you really can just compost or throw away the core. The easiest way to get rid of it is to simply cut it at an angle like this. That's why quartering it is so handy. It makes it easy to get rid of that core without potentially hurting yourself. Now, if you really hate the food waste, one thing you could do with this is grate it and use it in something like, um, like a little fritter. Like uh, if you've ever had a potato pancake, um, you can actually use the cabbage cores for that as well or mix it with the potato if you're not into a full cabbage pancake. Um, but for now, we're just gonna get that out of the way. It doesn't work really well for the slaw recipe that we're making. So I'm just getting rid of this. And now to make the slaw, you have a couple options here. If you want the knife work, you have all kinds of flat sides. It should be easy to cut now. And you're gonna wanna always make sure you've got what I tell kids, your lobster claw. <laughs> you gotta get your lobster claw down there. Never ever cut with your fingers flat. If you look at what your fingers are doing when you're using the knife, if your knife is like this and your fingers are like this, you potentially could take off the tip of your finger. If you have your lobster claw, you can actually use your fingers to guide the knife as you cut. And the worst that's gonna happen is maybe you give a little nick on your knuckle, but as long as you're balancing your knife there, you should be fine. So I'm going to just cut very thin slices of my cabbage. Another option, if you have it, is to use a cheese grater. You're gonna wanna use the largest holes on your cheese grater, and you can literally grate the cabbage. Now this makes a difference in the size. When you're cutting it like this, it's obviously a little bit bigger pieces. When you're cutting it like this, it's quite small. This is fine if you wa don't want to have as big a chunks of cabbage. However, it won't last as long in the refrigerator as the bigger chunks, and it won't give you quite as much of a toothsome bite when you're making your slaw. So I'm gonna put all of this aside because you probably don't wanna watch me cut or grate cabbage for this entire video. And I'm gonna talk about another, sort of maybe not as traditional um, for people in the US, ingredients for our slaw for a taco. I love to have lots of color. The more color you can have in your food, the more nutrients you're getting. So you don't have to think about, am I getting this nutrient? Am I getting that nutrient? Simply think, how many colors did I eat today? So every chance I have, I'm going to try to add multiple colors to my food. This slaw is perfectly fine just with cabbage. But we're gonna add carrot because then we've got a little bit of orange. Now we want this to be a slaw, so I'm gonna use that cheese grater again. And then I get these nice fine shreds of carrot that I can throw into my slaw. 
So what have we got in here? Like I said, you probably don't want to watch me chop all of this. So I have some cabbage, some carrot. I did throw a little green onion in there. I'll talk about those in a second. Um, but this is what it kind of looks like when you have it put together. And this cabbage has been actually cut with a knife rather than that cheese grater. So let's come back to that green onion now. I want you to notice when I went to scrape my cutting board, I didn't use the sharp side of my knife. You never want to use the sharp side of your knife when you're use, uh, scraping your board. All that does is dull your knife and potentially, if this is a plastic or wood cutting board, you're going to get particles of wood or particles of black plastic scraped into your food. So just turn your knife around and scrape with the dull side. All right, so the green onion, also known as the scallion, um, we are just using the green parts for this. And I'm literally just, I washed it. And then if you see anything that looks a little less fresh, because that happens with onions, you can just peel it right off and set it aside. So you can use the white and the green in this recipe. Both are completely edible. You just don't want to use these roots. But I'll show you a trick that's pretty cool. If your recipe only calls for the green, or maybe you can choose to just do the green, just going to slice it like this. But I'm going to leave some of that light green. And you can do a fun little trick in your kitchen where you take your green onion and you stick it in a little thing of water and this will grow fresh green stalks. And you can use it two or three times as long as you keep changing out this water and giving it fresh water every couple of days. And then you get two to three times the green onion than what you paid for. So let's talk about what we're gonna do with our dressing. First of all, I wanna be able to eat this slaw right away and have it feel really good in my mouth. So we're going to massage our cabbage. So I'm gonna start, we have a little bit of lime juice that we're gonna use, and we are gonna make a dressing with this, but I'm gonna pour a little bit of the lime ahead of time. And I'm also gonna put a little bit of the salt. And then, just to make it easier, I'm gonna throw some gloves on. You don't need gloves. I think it's good to have contact with your food. But if you have any cuts or anything, you probably don't wanna put your hands into a bunch of lime juice. That's not gonna feel good. So if you have gloves, feel free. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to soften the cabbage with my own hands. So you're literally just squeezing that cabbage, mixing it with the lime juice. The combination of the salt and the acid will make the cabbage softer. So if you don't want it to be too crunchy, this is what you're gonna wanna do. Now, if you're making this slaw to use later, you don't have to do this step because the acid and salt will work with time to make it softer. But already, this is getting really, really soft. I've seen kale salads, for example, or cabbage salads where people have massaged it to the point where it looks almost like it's been cooked. You don't have to work that hard. We still want it to feel like a salad. So I've got it nice and soft. You can see it looks soft. And now we're going to make the rest of that dressing. So I have a little jar here. I just put the oil in ahead of time. You're going to want to use a neutral oil. You don't have to use an expensive oil for this. Don't bother with something like olive oil. You're not really going to taste the olive oil because we're putting in spices. So we're putting in cumin which is a very earthy kind of flavor. And coriander, which is a sort of bright citrusy flavor to it. And a little bit of garlic. Not much, because we're gonna make some black beans that really bring the garlic flavor in just a minute. Um, and then I'm gonna pour in more of that lime juice. Now you can take a fork and whisk this all together in a bowl. You don't have to do it this way, but this is also a great way to let a kid get involved in the cooking. If you have a jar with a lid, they'd love to shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it. And it's a really kind of cheater way to force the oil and the lime juice to work together. So it's all mixed now and fully incorporated. 
Now this has already got some lime juice on it, but we're gonna be adding a lot more of that flavor now with the seasoning that's in this dressing. And we can just toss it to coat. Now the last thing that you can do is add a little cilantro, which of course is a classic ingredient in any kind of Mexican cooking. I didn't add the cilantro right at the start because it would have gotten too soft. Um, you don't really need to massage cilantro. Um, and you'll notice when you look at the cilantro that I still have the stems on here. You can use the stems. I don't know who's got time to pick off every little leaf on the cilantro, but I wanna get eating. I don't have the patience for that. And it turns out that actually you're better off not to do that anyway because there's actually more flavor in the stem than there is the leaf. Now, especially with a slaw like this, if you have some bigger stems on the cilantro, they work great. But if you'll notice, I've bunched it up. I've got my fingers in the correct position so I don't take off the tip of any of my fingers. And I just go through and cut it one way. And now I'm gonna cross hatch it and go the other way. And my fingers don't need to be in the way at all. And these don't have to be microscopic. The leaves will wilt a little bit in the slaw. But I'm just gonna scoop those up. And I'm gonna grab a spoon. And mix this together. So you can see we've got all different colors. Even the different colors of green can indicate different nutrients. And we're gonna set that aside because it's just gonna get tastier the longer it sits. And while we wait for that dressing to develop its flavors on the cabbage, we're gonna start with the black beans. Now, I just love black beans, pinto beans, any kind of bean. I think it's absolutely delicious and it's such an economical way to eat. Now, you can do dried beans that you cook. You just boil them in water. But if you're in a pinch, canned black beans are just fine. Um, I have a little bit of oil. Again, it's not a flavored oil. So you can use canola, you could use vegetable, safflower, grapeseed, whatever you want, whatever's in your price point and your, what you want to taste. Just you don't have to use, again, olive oil because we're cooking and we're adding a bunch of flavor. So the olive oil would disappear in this. Save your olive oil for a salad where you get to taste it. You also don't have to do anything like coconut or anything expensive, just a neutral oil. We have other things that are going to sing in this recipe besides that. Um, so I'm just letting that oil heat up a little bit. Um, the other things that I have here, I have some garlic and I have some red pepper flakes. You can skip the red pepper flakes or any of the heat seasonings that we use in these recipes anytime, it's up to you. Um, a little bit of salt, beans love salt. If you make a batch of beans from scratch and you're boiling them, don't forget to salt the water. Um, and then I just have these black beans. Now, I drained them. You don't have to fully drain them unless you look at the label and you see that there's quite a bit of sodium. These actually have barely any sodium, so I could have probably left a little bit of the water from the beans and it would have been fine because we're gonna mush these beans up and almost make them like refried beans. The only reason that I don't want to use canned refried beans, well one, I really love the flavor of black beans, and two, it can be really hard to control the sodium with a can of refried beans. They just inevitably tend to have a lot of salt. We're basically gonna make something that looks like refried beans, but it's from scratch and we control how much salt we put in it. So, I'm ready with all my ingredients. You definitely don't want to have this garlic ready to cook and then you're still opening your can of beans. Please, please, please make sure you're ready with the next step because this garlic is going to cook fast. So I can smell it and it's already turning a little bit brown. So I'm gonna go ahead and quickly dump the beans. And then I'm going to add the salt and a little bit
little bit of red pepper flake because I like a little heat. You could also add cayenne powder, chili powder. It's really, if you want heat, you can add anything you want that's spicy. It's going to work. You also can control how much garlic you want to add. If you don't like a lot of garlic, just make these some black beans and you don't have to do any garlic. If you really want to pump it up, I used about three cloves in this. Um, these are 15 ounce cans of black beans. So three cloves for that, you could do four or five if you really want to go for it. So we're going to let those heat up, but I don't want to make the assumption that you all just know exactly how to deal with garlic. Because I work with people all the time who don't know how to cut garlic. So um, we have here some cloves of garlic and we're going to smash this with our knife. Please, you don't need to do this. We're not karate chopping our garlic. We're just gently putting some pressure to try to crack open that paper. And it's pretty easy to peel once you've cracked open that paper. I say that, and then this one's a little bit sticky, of course. So there's a couple options here. If you have a garlic press, you can most certainly for this recipe employ that. It's fast and easy, but I always feel like what I traded in chopping time, um, I got in cleaning time with my garlic press. So it's super fun. Again, kids love this. Just gonna press this. And you can find these sometimes at thrift stores and stuff. Almost all of the tools like this, the juicers that I'm using, the garlic presses, we got them secondhand when we were stocking this kitchen. So I know that they're out there and you can find them. So I'm gonna press this and just try to get as much of the garlic. And again, I'm using the flat side of the knife. We don't need it to be super sharp scraping on this metal press. And I just get all that out and it's the right size for my black beans or for my salad. If you want to use a knife, I'll show you how you're gonna cut this. And we have a little trick, let me see here. We're gonna put a little bit of salt on our cutting board. And what this does is sometimes people will complain about that the garlic shifts around or it scatters across the board as you're cutting. But if you put a little salt there, as you cut the garlic, it's gonna get sticky with the salt. And it stays in place a little bit better. So again, got this. And I'm just gonna slice it up. So this is sliced garlic. We want it minced for this recipe. So I have my little slices, they're kind of in a row. I'm gonna get my fingers out of the way and I'm gonna do just like I did for the cilantro. I cut it one way, now I'm cutting it the opposite direction. And honestly, I might have said that the kids really like the garlic press, but if you have a kid that really wants to use a knife, this is also a very popular task at our cooking classes for kids, is to get to chop up the garlic and they feel like pros as they just go back and forth over the pieces of garlic. So we have our little tiny pieces of garlic and that is how I prep the garlic to go into these black beans. Let's take a quick look here. So it's starting to stick a little to the pan. Not burn, just cooking off some of the liquid that was still in the cans of beans. I'm gonna cook them just a tiny bit longer and I'm also gonna turn on this cast iron skillet you see here because we're going to have these with corn tortillas. Corn tortillas are so delicious and very traditional obviously for your tacos. Um, but if you haven't had a corn tortilla before, they're absolutely terrible to eat out of a refrigerator without heating them up. <laughs> I love them, but it is just the truth. So a lot of times you can find them frozen or you can find them shelf stable in huge batches. So they're a really economical way to eat. Um, tacos are a super, super cheap option, um, but you're gonna wanna heat these up if you're not using a flour tortilla. And you have two options for that. You can heat them in a dry pan or with a little bit of oil. Um, personally, I like a little bit of oil myself, but I'll show you a dry pan first. This is a cast iron skillet, so it's gonna take a minute to heat up. That's okay, we're gonna keep an eye on the beans. And I had a thought about another use you could do with that leftover cabbage if you have it. 
So let me add just a touch of water to these beans to keep them from sticking. And one other thing that should be noted is if you want to avoid some of the fat from oil and your tortilla and you decide to do a dry fry for your tortilla, please make sure you're not doing it in a Teflon pan. You can do this in just about any pan you have. Cast iron skillets are pretty great for getting a nice browning, but if you don't have one, use what you've got. If you only have Teflon, please make sure to do even a small amount of oil in the pan. Teflon isn't designed for dry heat. They really like to have fat in the pan. And of course, you probably know only plastic utensils. Don't be using metal in your, your Teflon, excuse me. Um, so just make sure that you do a little bit of oil if you're doing this in a Teflon pan. It makes it more likely to peel if you do it with um, no oil. So we're just going to let that cook for a second. Now, one of the other recipes that you can find on this website is a really simple roasted cabbage. And while I have this cabbage here and we're waiting for this to heat up, I'm just gonna show you what you would do for that. So I have these chunks of cabbage. I quartered my cabbage, remember? If I wanted to have a very simple side dish with my meal, all I need to do is cut this again. And I get this lovely little wedge of cabbage. And you can cut it this way. You can have them be a little bit thicker, that's fine. And then what you're going to do is just simply arrange these in a pan and toss them with a little bit of olive oil. Here's one we're using the olive oil makes sense because we're gonna have a flavor from that. So I'm literally just going to put a little bit of olive oil on here, a little bit of salt, and I'm gonna roast this until they are nice and soft and you're seeing little brown and even black edges on the cabbage. You pull it out and you just sprinkle some lime or lemon juice on it and you're good to go. I know it doesn't sound that appetizing, just roasting cabbage with some olive oil and salt, but it's so good. You're basically caramelizing the sugars in the plant when you slow roast it like that. So just another just a little bonus thing, you'll find the recipe, like I said, on this website but it's really worth trying that slow roasted cabbage. So we have here, I'm gonna turn my heat down. If there's smoke, it's too hot. And we have a tortilla that's soft, it's pliable, it's toothsome, and it's lightly browned. So I don't know if you can see this, but there's just little brown spotting that's happening on the tortilla, but it's not blackened. This is perfect. I can still roll it up into my taco shape. So let's give this a try with a little bit of oil. Again, don't use olive oil. We're cooking these at pretty high heat. The other thing about olive oil is that it's not meant for high heat. So you're going to have a higher smoke point. And when you see smoke point, it's not good for you. <laughs> it's not good for you, it's not good for the food. So I put a light coating of oil. And because my pan was already hot, the oil is already ready to go. Now if you're worried, you don't wanna put this tortilla in cold oil. So what I do is I'll just dip the edge and I hear a sizzle. If you don't hear a sizzle, if you don't see any bubbling in the oil, it's too cold and your oil is just gonna saturate your tortilla and make it kinda greasy. So I'm just gonna stick this in here I can hear the sizzle, it's great. And while that's cooking, you can take a look at these beans. So they're nice and cooked, they're dry. And now I'm just gonna mash them. This is just a standard potato masher, once again, courtesy of either Salvation Army, St. Vincent de Paul, or Goodwill. And I'm just going to mash this up. I'm leaving some of the beans whole. I'm going to remove it from the heat. And now we have our own homemade style refried beans. And what we're going to do is we're going to take that tortilla that we made 
and I'm going to show you assembling your taco. So you're going to take a little slather of your black beans and the nice thing about mashing them like that is it makes them sort of sticky. So you don't have to worry about the black beans falling all over the place. They're going to stick to this tortilla. And then you're going to take a little bit of your slaw. Oh, and I am an overstuffer. I think it's a sign of optimism, but people who build sandwiches that are so big you can hardly fit in your mouth, they build a taco that you can't really pick up without things falling out, it's okay, I'm with you. <laughs> it's better to have more filling than not enough, right? Um, but I put a lot of slaw in there, and I'm gonna grab one more thing to show you. And that's it, you can top this with anything you want. You can do sliced avocado, you can put a little drizzle of hot sauce on this. Um, we have here some feta cheese. Now, feta is a Greek cheese. <laughs> it's not a traditional Mexican cheese. You can find some of the more traditional Mexican cheeses that you would have on tacos, and they're great. But if you don't wanna do specialty shopping or the price point is out of your range, feta is a cheaper alternative that does the same thing it's just that nice salty goodness that you're gonna put on there. It's gonna add a little bit of kick to your taco. Um, if feta's not your cup of tea and the Mexican cheeses aren't, I don't care if you wanna put shredded cheddar on here. It's about your taste buds. Though, a hot tip, when you put your black beans on there, if you're doing like a shredded Colby or cheddar or whatever it is that you wanna do, put it on the black beans when they're still warm and the cheese will get all nice and melty on there and it won't fall all over and it'll be nice and gooey. Um, but if you can swing it and you like it, I love the feta on here. And you can see then how lovely that is. And you can top it with a little bit more cilantro or green onion if you have the extra. Thank you for joining us today and I hope you enjoy your tacos.